you understand that there are number of blood vessels, there should be the heart. We don't see the heart, but we can see the blood vessels. So let's start with the big one. This is the biggest one. You know that from the heart, one blood vessel is going out, carrying the oxygenated blood. We call it ascending aorta. Then we had the arch of the aorta. Then we got the descending aorta. Now you can see the whole blood vessel here, right? So from the arch of the aorta, you have got three blood vessels. This one is the right brachiocephalic, but soon after that, it becomes right common carotid and right subclavian artery, all right? So this one is the vein corresponding. This is the right subclavian vein, and the name of the vein here is different. It's not called the common carotid vein. Rather, we call it jugular vein. Here comes the left subclavian vein, and on its way, it is connected to the left jugular veins, as you can see right here, all right? And they both unite together superior. to form the superior vena cava. Very good, superior vena cava. And the rest of the story, you know. So while we are having other two blood vessels here, the one, you can see straight away it's going up, but on the left side. So it's called left common carotid. The one you can see right next to it, it goes to the arm, right? So it must be the left subclavian. The left subclavian vein is the left subclavian artery. Only difference is the name of jugular and carotid. Carotid goes with artery, jugular goes with the vein. All right. Now this part of the descending aorta, we call it thoracic aorta because it's within the thorax. This is the diaphragm, and below the diaphragm, you know, abdomen is over there, right? So the rest of the aorta here, you will call it abdominal aorta. Abdominal aorta has got several anterior and side branches. Not all of the things are important, only a couple of them. The first one you can see. Can you see the first one? I can see all of them. All of them, all right, very good. <laughs> You've got four eyes like me, right? So you can see more. All right. So this is the celiac trunk, all right, celiac trunk. It supplies the stomach and surrounding areas. These two will not bother ab about them because one of them are hepatic and, and another one is splenic. We will not talk about that. This is the celiac, the midline one. Again, in the midline, you will find another one, little below, that is the superior mesenteric. Superior mesenteric will supply the middle part of the intestine, like whole of the small intestine, big portion of the large intestine, the superior mesenteric. Below the superior mesenteric, you can see some paired thing. These are testicular or ovarian. Suppose this is one male, so this blood vessel will go to the testis. If this is one female, this blood vessel should reach here to supply the ovary. And the same thing on the opposite side, testicular. Because they, the, <coughs> sorry, the gonads, they developed right here and gradually they went down, so that's why still they're connected right here. This one, at the bottom, it is called inferior mesentery. It will supply the remaining portion of the intestine, inferior mesentery. All right. The thing we left, these are the renal arteries, as you can see, kidney, renal arteries. All right. Renal arteries, one on each side, kidneys. And this is the renal vein, we will go there. However, when the uh, aorta, abdominal aorta reaches the... Uh, sacrum, here is the sacrum at the back, it divides into two branches, two big branches. These are called common iliac arteries. They're going to the ileum, so that's why they are called common iliac arteries. Soon after that, the common iliac artery or arteries will become two branches, two more branches. This one is supplying the internal organs. This is the smaller one. You will call it internal iliac artery, and this one you will call it external iliac artery. Same way. External iliac artery, this is the inguinal ligament actually, and beneath the inguinal ligament, it will go out and it will become femoral artery. All right, femoral artery. And rest of the story is very simple. Femoral artery will go behind the knee. You will call it <laughs> popliteal, popliteal artery. And then that will go through your knee joint and will go down. That is called arteria dorsalis pedis. One small artery right on the foot. There are several smaller branches. 
here and there you don't have to worry these branches all right now about the veins you know that there are two sets of veins superficial and deep right yeah. superficial is this one this is the great saphanous vein the longest vein of our body it begins here like snake saphanous and it doesn't go inside the abdomen before just going inside the abdomen it connects the femoral vein deep vein femoral vein should go with the femoral artery Femoral vein will go inside the abdomen. Now the name is changed. Now you call it external iliac vein. The external iliac vein will join with the internal iliac vein. Same way the arteries are. You call it common iliac vein. Two common iliac veins are joined together, but there is nothing like abdominal vein. You call it inferior vena cava. All right? Inferior vena cava, there are branches like this, but I'm not going to ask you. Only you see renal vein, big vein. In Fibina cover will eventually 